Hello, my dear students. Welcome to 15 Minute Hikka. I hope you are all healthy and keeping safe. In this today's session, I'm going to give a broad overview of various career prospects in chemistry. If you are studying chemistry right now or planning to study in near future, I'm going to start from 10 plus two, where you st first study chemistry as the separate discipline and will focus mostly the Indian education system as well as the job scenario. Now, why we study chemistry? Chemistry is a fundamental branch of natural sciences, which helps us to understand the world around us. Broadly, it is distinguished between four disciplines, organic, analytical, physical, and inorganic chemistry. And as you can see, it is related to various other disciplines such as biology, medicine, agriculture, environmental science, geology, physics, as well as some engineering disciplines like material science, nanotechnology, and chemical engineering. Because of this interdisciplinary character of this subject, the job options are also high and the scope of the subject is also very high. So this interdisciplinary nature makes it a very useful subject. Now, when you go to class 12, most of the science stream students have an aspiration to go for either engineering or medical sciences. Now, if you are a engineering aspirant, the most common exam is joint entrance examination, which is conducted by national testing agency for admission into IITs, NITs and other engineering colleges. So physics, chemistry and mathematics are the important subjects for this test. Here, I also want to tell you one thing that you can use this JE exam to get into BSMS programs in ISERS, which are Indian Institute of Science Education and Research Institutes, which are five year programs and also four year BTEC or BS programs in chemistry in some of the IITs. So JE exam can help you to study chemistry right after class 12. Now, if you are a medical aspirant, you can give the exam NWT, National Eligibility Come Entrance Test, which is also conducted by NTA, where physics, chemistry, and biology are the important subjects. This exam helps you to get, get into various medical colleges across India to study MBBS. If you are interested in defense services, you can also go for National Defense Academy Entrance Test, which is almost similar to JEE. Now, if you don't want to study any of those and you want to pursue higher studies, you can do a Bachelor of Science, uh, the graduation in the subject you like the most. Now, if the subject is chemistry, the, the course is known as BSc in chemistry in India. The question arises where you will study. You can study in various colleges affiliated to different universities if, in Assam. There are several good colleges in our state. You can go to one of them or you can also go to University of Delhi colleges. There are a lot of students go to University of Delhi colleges or you can also uh, explore other places in India such as Kolkata, Mumbai, Pune or Chennai, which also offers some of uh, good BSc programs. But the point is wherever you study, I have seen that many students end up studying from teachers notes or mugging up the notes for university exams. That is not going to help you in the long run when you are going to give some entrance exam or uh, land up in job interviews. I would suggest you very thoroughly read some textbooks in each subject so that you are, your conceptual clarity is good for writing those exams. Some of these textbooks are in organic chemistry. You can go for Morrison and Boyd, Solomons, Finner, Peter Sykes, or even Clayden, which is little bit advanced level textbook. You can also, for physical chemistry, you can go for Atkins, Macquarie and Simon, as well as Kale Kapoor. For inorganic chemistry, you can refer to J.D. Lee, James Huey, as well as Cotton and Wilkinson. These standard textbooks will help you to build some concepts clear for uh, your future uh, career in chemistry or your job scenario. Now, once you have studied BSc chemistry, by that time, you'll have a good idea about whether you like the subject, you like this, uh, you want to study it more, or you want to leave it and do a job. If you are still interested in studying chemistry further, you can go for MSc in chemistry. If you are not interested, 
you can go for a job or you can study something else to increase your skill set. Now, if we have decided to study MSc chemistry, again, the question will come where I should do a MSc course. There are a lot of state and central universities, including uh, Delhi University, JNU, uh, Banaras Hindu University, University of Hyderabad, which offers some uh, good uh, master's programs. They have their own entrance test as well as merit-based admissions. You can also aim for getting MSc in uh, premier institutes like IITs, NITs, Indian Institute of Science, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, ZNCSR, etc., where they offer either two-year MSc or an integrated MSc PhD program. To go into some of these institute, you have to appear in this joint admission to MSc, which is known as JAM test, for getting into some of these institutes. I don't see many people from Assam appearing in this uh, test, which is conducted nationally in the month of March, April or so, which helps you to get into one of these good institutes. I'll discuss more about this test in the, in the live session. You can also go for some reputed private universities, as well as you can also plan for um, MS abroad, which I'll focus more in the live session. If you have decided to go for a job after BSc, then there are several options. However, some of these are not only specific to chemistry. For example, you can go for civil services exam, which is conducted by Union Public Service Commission, as well as Indian Forest Services exam, and also Assam Civil Service. You can also appear for Defense Services exam, which is conducted by UPSC also, which is known as Central Combined Defense Services exam. You can also apply for probationary officers in various banking sector. In addition, there are several chemistry specific entry level jobs in public sector undertakings, such as ONGC, NTPC, etc., as well as private industries, which are involved in pharmaceuticals, paint, cement, cosmetic industries. You can also apply for those kind of jobs. And if you are interested in teaching, you can always follow that patient by doing a B.A. course and appearing in TET exam conducted by Assam government, as well as you can also appear in some national level exams to teach as a TZT science teacher in Kendra Vidyalas and Jawahar Navadeya Vidyalas. Additionally, you can increase your skill set by studying some professional courses such as MBA, MCA, mass communication and law, etc., which will expand your job market. Also, you can also Think of some state government jobs, which are often advertised, advertised in um, newspapers and periodicals. One thing I want to emphasize here that in some of these job interviews, other than chemistry, quantitative aptitude, general studies, and logics and reasoning are also required. However, in some of the chemistry specific entry level jobs in PSUs and private industry, a MSc is more preferred, which I will discuss in a little while. If you have done a MSc already and you are still interested in studying chemistry further, you can go for a Doctor of Philosophy course in chemistry known as PhD or a MTech Master of Technology course in a industrially relevant specialized area. If you are not interested in studying chemistry any further, you can apply for all the jobs which I have listed in the previous slide or study something else. Now, if you have chosen to do a PhD in chemistry, the question will arise where you would like to do and in which area. The area should be of your interest. And if you have decided to do it in India, there are several good institutes that offer PhD programs like Indian Institute of Science, TIFR, all the IITs, ISARs, NITs, CSIR labs, that is Council of Scientific and Industrial Research Labs, which are chemistry specifics, research institutes, which are independent, uh, independent in nature, then central and state universities also have some good PhD programs, as well as some reputed private universities. The applications are called usually twice a year. You have to look for these um, uh, calls, interview calls when they appear, uh, then when they advertise. 
However, there are some eligibility requirements for attending some PhD interviews. So one of them is you have to clear an exam known as GATE. GATE is the Graduate Aptitude Test in Engineering. It is conducted by one of the IITs or Indian Institute of Science. So this, this test tests your skill in different uh, disciplines of chemistry and conceptual clarity. The other test is CSIR UGC NET JRF, NET meaning National Eligibility Test and Junior Research Fellowship. This is conducted by Council of Scientific and Industrial Research as well as University Grants Commission. This, this, if you clear this test, then you get fellowship for five years. And the, in chemistry, there are about 150 to 200 fellowships. This test is conducted twice a year. So after clearing MSc, you should aim to appear for one of these tests. The, the, uh, this test also helps you to gain lectureship eligibility for teaching into various colleges. There are some other agencies like Department of Biotechnology, which also offer uh, junior research fellowship, uh, fellowship programs, but uh, a biology background or a MSc in biochemistry will help you to get that fellowship. Now, if you have decided to go for a PhD from abroad, then there are some other sets of exams required like GRE, Graduate Record Examination, TOEFL, Test of English as a Foreign Language, and ILTS exams. I'm going to discuss more about this in the live interactive session, which is uh, occurring next week. And what are the opportunities after PhD? So PhD uh, makes you more specialized in the subject. You can go for postdoctoral research and to get more specialization and research experience. You can go for faculty jobs in universities and other institutes. In addition, you can also go for R&D positions in different uh, R&D based industries. And even scientific editing, you can also go for editing jobs as an editor in reputed scientific journals. If you want to go for a job after MSc chemistry, then there are several options to explore in the government sector. You can apply for postgraduate trainee teacher in schools or for assistant professor positions in colleges. You can also apply for scientist positions offered by research and development organizations such as BARC, DRDO, or ISRO, etc., through GATE and interview. You can also apply for assistant chemist positions offered by central and state PSUs such as ONGC and TPC which also appoints through GATE, SCORE, and INTERVIEW. You can also apply for Assistant Officer Quality Control in IOCL through GATE and with two, year of, two years of experience. As you can see, after MSc, clearing GATE gives you a lot of opportunities to apply in government, government sector. You can also work as a Patent Officer or Examiner of Patents in Controller General of Patents, Designs and Trademarks Agency, which appoints through exam and, and the interview. You can also work in a food related organization such as Food Safety and Standards Authority of, Authority of India or Food Corporation of India through an exam and an interview. You can also write geochemist position exam for Geological Survey of India, which is conducted by Union Public Service Commission. You can also apply for SPM CIL job, which, is, which stands for Security Printing and Minting Corporation of India for an assistant manager position. As you can see, several options open up after MSc Chemistry. Private sector also presents exciting career opportunities for MSc Chemistry students. These are mainly the private R&D companies which are involved in pharmaceuticals, drug development, dye and paint, polymer, textiles, chemicals, consumer goods, agriculture, and healthcare products. Here I have given some examples with their websites. Companies such as Rainbaxi Labs, Dr. Reddy's Labs, Sinzin, and Abbott, they are involved in making drugs and pharmaceuticals, and they always look for students from organic chemistry background. Companies such as Hindustan Unilever and Dabar, they are involved in making consumer goods and healthcare supplements. They also often advertise for chemistry-based positions. Companies such as Tata Chemicals and BASF, they are chemicals making company which are used either in agriculture, industries, or in day-to-day -day life. 
and they also often recruit chemistry students. Companies such as Azilen Technologies and Waters India are equipment making companies which are used in high end advanced research. And they also often advertise for chemistry based positions. This is not a comprehensive list. There are many other companies. You can visit their websites. I also suggest you can register yourself into some of the job seeking websites for getting notifications regarding such jobs. I hope in today's video, I was able to give a broad overview about different career directions and study paths if you are interested in the subject chemistry. We are going to discuss more about it in our upcoming live session next Sunday. I hope you stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you.